My brothers and sisters in Christ, today in the Gospel of Mark, at the beginning of chapter 5, we see Jesus' first excursion into Gentile territory in his public ministry. And so on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, in this land of the, the Gerasenes, as it's told to us uh, in the, the scriptures, Jesus encounters uh, of a man possessed, but in truly terrifying form. All of the symbolism of this encounter speaks of the dominion of the enemy. This man, not only is it in Gentile territory, but this man is possessed, he is stripped naked, he is raving, he's in chains, and he's amongst the tombs, among the dead. And so, this is truly a sense of oppression and yet strength, brutality of strength. The man has superhuman strength, as you can see, with a person who is possessed and yet is reduced to the worst form of indignity. And so to further this, I'm sure as this happens, even though the scripture doesn't, you know, doesn't record this, that Jesus' apostles, still fairly new and following him, are, are quite uneasy. Not only would this be an unsettling sight, but they're in Gentile territory and there's the sword of, hot, of the herd of swine nearby unclean animals. And so everything about this is offensive and uncomfortable for a Jew. And yet Jesus takes this step, if you will, into untamed territory, or perhaps a different way of saying it, the fallen world under the dominion of the enemy. He steps into this and has a confrontation with the demon, the one who calls himself Legion. Legion tries to assert himself upon Jesus. Jesus of course, has greater power, and instead subdues Legion. Legion eventually asks for permission to go into the swine, and this bizarre account that we see, the swine rush down the cliff, are drowned, and so you can imagine the, the locals are quite terrified. Not only is there this incredible scene, the scary person they could do nothing with, Jesus has completely healed, they find him returned to his senses, and all their swine, which is probably a basis of their making a living, are all dead. They ask Jesus to leave. Instead, when the, the man who's healed asks him to go, Jesus doesn't let him follow him. He doesn't let him go with them, but says to go and to spread the good news of what the Lord has done for him. He makes him an evangelist, a disciple. I find in this, and it's a very colorful account, but a fascinating reminder that we live in a world under the dominion of the Prince of Darkness because the world is still full of sin. And yet, this sin has no power over Christ. The enemy has no power over Christ. All dominion belongs to Christ, and Christ has the power over all of it. And so, amongst the horrible brutality of the world in darkness, the great offenses we do to one another towards God, the ways we strip each other of dignity and even our own humanity at times, and yet, the power and conviction of Christ is the light shining in darkness that has victory over all of these fallen powers. And so, the victory of Christ comes to this one and then asks him to show for this man to speak in his name. The others in the town are not ready to receive that gift. Instead, they are terrified. They drive Jesus away. Such is the response of the world that all too often is comfortable. It would rather stay in its familiar darkness than to step into the light. And yet, as disciples of Christ, we are called to shine that light to the world. Sometimes it's painstaking. It takes a long time. It sometimes may seem like it's two, you know, one step forward, two steps back. And yet, the kingdom of God is the dominion of Christ extended over all time and places, that sin will ultimately be eradicated, and that all things will be subject to him. God has created this world, and it belongs to him. It's under the control of the enemy for an appointed time, and yet this is not our home. This is not our destiny. Our life lies with Christ for eternity. May we always realize that, reject the darkness we see around us, and instead be light. May God bless you all.